Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Before I start this video, I want to say if this is your first time here, thank you for watching. If this is not your first time, thank you for your continued support. So today we're going to be talking about the exposure triangle in continuation with our series for photography for beginners. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to confess that this is really boring stuff. I remember trying to learn this when I was starting out and it was very confusing and very boring. But it's really important as a photographer to understand the exposure triangle. So before I can teach you all the fancy stuff like lighting with strobes and you know depth of field and all that, I must first talk about the exposure triangle. So bear with me, stay strong. I would encourage you to get a notebook and a pen because this video is going to have a lot of information and it's very confusing information. So you'll need to kind of refer back to your notes to digest what I'm talking about today. So the exposure triangle um, is essentially the three elements that determine how bright or how dark your picture is. And the three elements are your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. Now I'm going to do a video on each one independently, which will be linked in the description box. But for now, I'm going to give you just a general overview so you understand what each is. We can begin with your shutter speed. So I don't know if you've ever, you've ever taken a picture of your camera and you hear kind of a sound. That is the curtain in your camera closing. That's your shutter. So you can actually hear your shutter. And it's a curtain that closes behind your lens to decide how much light hits the sense of your camera. So what does this mean for the brightness or the darkness of your picture? If you want a really bright picture, you lower your shutter speed. You make it slower. If you want to darken your picture, you make it faster, the speed at which the shutter closes. Shutter speed is measured in fractions of seconds. So you could say my shutter speed is one four thousandth of a second. That's one over four thousand, which is really fast, which means your picture will be dark. Or you could say my shutter speed was one twenty-fifth of a second, one over twenty-five, or even three seconds long or one second long. Some cameras even go down to thirty seconds, which means it's a really slow shutter, which allows a lot of light to hit your camera sensor. In practical application, your shutter speed actually affects movement and motion in your picture and how you freeze it or unfreeze it. So have you ever seen people shooting at night and their picture is really bright? That's because they were using a really slow shutter speed. You could keep your shutter open for a minute even to let in all the very faint light at night into your sensor. If you're shooting on a really bright day and you're shooting the world's fastest runner, you would need a really fast shutter speed to let in less light into the camera and to freeze his motion so you could kind of see him suspended in the air rather than having his arms and legs being this hot blurry mess. Okay, so that's shutter speed. And I will create a link in the description box below to a video about freezing motion. So the next element in the exposure triangle is going to be your aperture. An aperture is measured in f-stops. So you could have an aperture of f1.8 or f22 or f5.6. An aperture is the size of the diaphragm in your lens that's letting in light into the camera. So you have your shutter and in front of that you have this circle which is your aperture. If you actually pick up your lens and look inside, the hole that you see, that's your aperture in action. The easiest way for me to explain aperture is kind of like the pupil in your eye or even better, it's like a tap. So if you're running water in a tap and you open it a little, you can either get a few drops or you can get a really powerful steady stream of water. And the tap, just like your aperture, is a circle. So the more you close the circle, the less water comes out of the tap. The more you close down your aperture, the less light comes into your lens. And the opposite is also true. Now, aperture has an effect on your depth of field, which I will create a link to that video in the description box below, explaining what that is. In regards to exposure, if you want a brighter picture, you need to have a very wide open aperture, so a lot of light reaches your camera sensor. Now, aperture is a bit confusing because the smaller the number, the bigger the aperture. The bigger the number, the smaller the aperture. This is where your notebook comes in handy. So a bright picture will use an aperture of like f2.8, whereas if you feel like your picture is too bright and you want to make it more dark, you're going to use an aperture of f11 or f22, okay? So aperture, a little bit confusing, but you can do really cool things with your aperture. 
The next element in the exposure triangle is the ISO, which stands for International Standards Organization. And honestly guys, these things were named so long ago, some of these things, the names don't make sense, but that's what it's called. Now, your ISO in a film camera controls the film sensitivity to light. In a digital camera, it's the sensor's sensitivity to light. What does this mean for exposure? If you're shooting in a really dark place, like at night, you actually need to increase your ISO so that your sensor is more sensitive to the tiny amounts of light that are, are available around it. If you're shooting in a really bright environment, you need to reduce your ISO so that your camera can cut out some of the excess light reaching your sensor so your picture is correctly exposed. So your ISO on your camera can range anywhere from ISO 25 to ISO 6400 or even higher. Depending on your camera, most have an ISO of about 100, but full frame cameras can go to 50 or 25, ISO 25. Now, the thing with ISO is if you increase your ISO, so if you go up to let's say 6400, your camera sensor has to work harder to establish an effective image on your camera. So it's going to create grain or noise in your image. Let's go back to black and white TVs. Do you remember when you're trying to tune your grandmother's TV and you get those lines that shh, you know, where there's no channel. Now that's noise. And if you look carefully at a picture shot with a really high ISO, you can actually see grain in the picture. That may or may not be a problem depending on what you're shooting. I do know some wedding photographers who like noise because it's more of a stylistic device. Whereas if you're shooting for a billboard, for example, the image is going to be blown up so big, the noise, those tiny dots will suddenly look like really huge dots, which is a big problem. So just to recap, your exposure triangle is made up of your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. And if you change any one of these three elements, they also have a secondary consequence. So changing your ISO may add noise to your pictures. Changing your shutter speed may mean that motion could become blurry or be frozen. Changing your aperture means that your depth of field will change. Let's use a really practical example using actual camera settings. So if I put my camera at ISO 200, my shutter speed is 1 over 2 50th of a second and my aperture is f2.8, I can get the exact same exposure so the exact same brightness or darkness with an f-stop of f8 a shutter speed of 1 over 60th of a second and iso of iso 400 so your picture will have different settings on your camera but the brightness or the darkness of the picture will actually be exactly the same if you have a camera with you i'd actually encourage you to pause this video and test those settings out on your camera to see exactly what i mean so thanks for watching guys, I know that was a lot of information, confusing, complicated information, but I promise you if you manage to understand it, your photography will be completely transformed. If it's your first time here, it would be awesome if you could hit the subscribe button below right next to the like button to get my videos for beginners every Monday and Thursday. I really do want to continue this series to make it very comprehensive for you. If it's not your first time here, thank you for the continued support. You can give the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. You can also connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, or on my website, www.tandiromoro.com. Links to all of those in the description box below. Or you can leave me a comment below and we can get a conversation going about what you learned today. If you're a professional photographer, I would love to hear your comments and your experiences using the three elements of the exposure triangle. So you can also drop a comment below. And I got this question from Chris, Belinda and Ivy. Hey guys! So I hope this video is really helpful for you. Until next time, see you guys later.